If you're looking for the best value Android tablet right now, the Xiaomi Pad 6 should be on your top list. Aside from having the performance to handle multiple apps running simultaneously, it's the most complete tablet for entertainment and productivity without having to worry about loading times or missing Google support. Yes, I'm looking at you, Huawei. If you are one of the small niche markets that aim to use a tablet for work, I have something interesting insights to share with you coming from a desktop or a laptop user. To give you some context, I mainly produce YouTube videos for this channel, but my other work stuff involves video editing in general. Although video editing is an intensive task, there is actually more to it. It involves researching, writing a script, watching videos while taking notes, transferring files, and checking emails. These are the other parts that don't get shown on videos. But the main advantage of having a PC or a laptop, at least when compared to a tablet like this, is the multitasking part of it. Having a desktop experience is just different when it comes to ultimate productivity. But in exchange for it is the portability and flexibility you get with the tablet. So let's start with the tablet plus keyboard experience. A quick disclaimer. I used a third-party keyboard from Dandycase. There is an official keyboard from Xiaomi for the Pad 6, but I opted for this one because it's cheaper and it's more functional. However, you get the same features as the original one, including keyboard shortcuts. But because this keyboard includes a detachable case and a touchpad, you get more functional features than the official keyboard. And no, this is not sponsored. Back to the topic at hand. Browsing is probably the most common activity you're going to do with a tablet if you're coming from a laptop. Using Google Chrome, you'll be glad to see that default setting for it is loading web pages in desktop mode to give you that familiar laptop or desktop feel. Most of the time, desktop mode works just fine, but expect some different behaviors when you do more than browsing. For example, if you're logging into a website version of an installed app, there will be times when you will be redirected to the app instead of loading the web page. Other times, it's better to use the app instead of forcing things to work on a mobile browser. As far as Windows management or the number of apps open and running in the foreground is concerned, the way Xiaomi does it, it's simple and easy to use but with some room for improvement and a weird quirk. So before, with the Pad 5, there was a desktop mode for Xiaomi's tablet that copied the look of a regular Windows desktop experience. With the Pad 6, that's no longer here. Xiaomi is introducing Workstation with HyperOS, complete with keyboard shortcut support. With the Workstation, you have the same look as an Android home screen but with a floating dock. And instead of having a full screen window experience, Xiaomi is maximizing the use of its floating windows. So the way you multitask is by having apps open in a style of vertical form, and you can have up to four floating apps, but we all know that a full screen app is still different. But the good thing is you can still have a full screen app open, but the not so good thing is you can do a full screen side by side window. You simply lose that ability in workstation mode, which is weird because in regular mode, you have all those window features in addition to that side-by-side -side window. Additionally, if you are in second space mode, you don't have the option to use workstation, but given you have more features with the regular mode, I don't see it as a loss or a downside. As far as productivity goes, it's going to depend on your workflow. If what you do is as simple as researching and writing articles, creating presentations, and light video editing for social media, the Android tablet experience is not bad. I can see myself working on an Android tablet. There's no denying you need to get used to how mobile apps and file management work, although it's possible to transition certain workflows from a full-blown laptop to an Android tablet. I think an Android tablet works best as an extension of your work done on the desktop, especially coming from someone who uses a desktop for work and play. Of course, there's always an option to get a laptop to make things easier but the Pad 6 offers better display, better portability, better speakers, better performance, and even better battery life compared to laptops at this price point. Speaking of performance, the Pad 6 is running on the Snapdragon 870, which is about a 30% upgrade in overall performance, especially gaming. I mean, I don't use this tablet for games, but there's no stopping you from enjoying games on a large screen. While this is not the best chipset for all sorts of games, 
it has enough to play mostly all games without any problems. It'll struggle a bit in newer titles like Warzone Mobile, but the game is playable, to say the least. You will encounter frame drops from time to time and stutters at times, but I still can't tell whether that's on the chipset or the developers because the game is poorly optimized apparently. Outside gaming, the Pad 6 performs great thanks also in part to the 8GB of RAM. I noticed a lot of stutters last time with the Pad 5 and I'm glad to report that it's now gone here. I wish it was 12GB to give the Pad 6 some breathing room in the future because Xiaomi apparently may support this tablet for up to 3 years of software upgrades and 5 years of security updates. I feel bad for the Pad 5 owners because it won't ever get HyperOS unless you flash a custom ROM for yourself. The other advantage of choosing a tablet over a laptop is the ability to just detach the keyboard and have a tablet experience. That's the best thing I noticed during my testing. Because the screen of the Pad 6 is large, bright, and colorful, it's hard not to watch a video, it's hard not to browse on apps, simply because there's so much screen space. Although the spec sheet shows a similar panel from last year, which is an 11-inch IPS LCD in a 16 bytes and aspect ratio, for some reason, the screen feels a bit compact and not as big. However, it's definitely slightly brighter at 515 nits max. Xiaomi does have an official plan for the Pad 6, but I don't have a sample to test its features, so... The battery is slightly bigger at 8840 mAh. You still get the same great battery life. I think you can finish 3 movies before the battery depletes, but as far as charging speeds go, the 33 watt brick in the box requires an hour and a half to fully charge the tablet. Some things that stayed here are the quad speakers that still sound loud and good, 13 megapixel main camera with 4K video recording and 8 megapixel selfie camera with 1080p resolution for meetings, and the aluminum frame but with the aluminum back for the design. This is the gold color of the tablet, but in person, it looks a lot like silver. Some things to take note of are the lack of NFC, SIM slot, and SD card slot for storage expansion. Wi-Fi 6 is here for faster speeds as well as Bluetooth 5.2, and you also have the magnetic pin on the back for the official keyboard for this tablet, which in comparison to a standard Bluetooth keyboard should provide almost no latency when typing. The Xiaomi Pad 6 has been out for a while now, and if you're still wondering if this is the right purchase for you, it's all about the use case. If you just want a decent tablet that's not as pricey as iPads, this is the best option right now in terms of both price and performance. Pairing this with a keyboard will make this a productivity machine in certain cases. But if you're looking for a much more powerful tablet that can rival the iPads, unfortunately, the Pad 6 Pro is not available locally. For that, you would have to go through other manufacturers, specifically Samsung and Huawei. But at that price point, might be better off with an iPad, simply because it's more powerful and has better OS for a tablet experience. But that's it for this one. Drop a sub or like if you feel like supporting the channel. And as always, until the next one, stay safe.